Now to some major news coming out of the Fed. St. Louis Fed President James Bullard is stepping down, apparently to take a, an academia job. Steve Leisman joining us with details. Hi, Steve. Hi, uh, Kelly. Yeah, uh, James Bullard, one of the longest serving uh, bank presidents uh, on the uh, Federal Market Committee, is stepping down today. Uh, and he is taking a job at the Mitchell Daniels uh, Business School at Purdue. Um, he has been at the Fed. I'm just uh, double checking the release here because it's a long time he's been there, uh, 33 years, uh, but he's been president since 2008. And as you know, Kelly, we have a relatively new crop of bank presidents. And Bullard was, I, I have not been able to confirm if he's the longest serving president, but certainly one of the longest serving presidents on the uh, uh, FOMC. Uh, and he's going to be dean. He's uh, stepping down today, going to be advising uh, the board at St. Louis, uh, uh, St. Louis Fed uh, and, and the bank uh, until August 14th. And then August 15th, he starts a job. It's fairly unusual, I want to say, for this kind of immediate uh, 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 departure. Usually the bank presidents stay in place until a replacement is found. Sometimes they leave and uh, a, a replacement is found later. And the uh, process of replacing them can take a long time. I think they're still looking for a president of Kansas City after um, uh, uh, Elizabeth, um, sorry, uh, George uh, stepped down. And um, uh, right now, uh, it looks like uh, uh, I'm sure, uh, Kathleen O'Neill Pease, I guess, will take uh, his place. Uh, she is the chief operating officer and first vice president. Bullard is not a voter now. It looks like St. Louis next has the vote in 2025. Steve, how does Bullard's absence, coming absence from the room, shift perhaps the tenor of the conversation at the Fed? I mean, voting member or not, he's been a presence for so long. You're familiar with uh, the position that he's had on rates recently and, and the sort of <clears throat> Fed speak that he has delivered. How's it going to shift the tone of things? So Jim has been very much a forward thinker, sometimes uh, too forward for some of his colleagues. Um, but he has uh, pioneered a lot of different thinking. I think uh, when it came to raising by 75 basis points, Jim was one of the first ones to lay it out there. He also laid out a uh, uh, controversial uh, look at the Taylor rule that showed that the uh, funds rate may lead from may, may uh, need to go from five to seven percent. Um, and uh, uh, that's, I guess, since been necessarily not necessarily confirmed, but been part of the conversation. Uh, he has led the way and he's sort of led you astray every now and then. But He's always done what he's done based on research, I want to say, and, and some form of, a, of economic uh, principle behind it. Uh, he was the first guy, as I recall, to not put in a longer term uh, Fed funds forecast because he suggested there are potentially multiple equilibriums out there. I don't want to say he's a hawk. He's been very hawkish in this recent hike, but he also was among the first uh, uh, when it came to be, being dovish uh, for the pandemic. And times before that. So I don't think he's uh, uh, died in a uh, died in the wool hawk. He's been he's been extremely hawkish through this process here. And he's been one who said the Fed needs to keep raising rates in this process. But I think I could I could definitely point to other processes where Jim has been more dovish than your average Fed member. I agree with that, Steve. I'm seeing a lot of takes about, you know, the Fed immediately loses its biggest talk. He's not certainly always been that way. Would you say that's the, the case right now that he's even the most hawkish member? Um, I think so. Um, I, I will say this. Um, when, when Jim put out that, uh, um, that look at the two different Taylor rules that showed the range of 5 to 7 percent, um, I have continuously asked him about where we are with those uh, calculations of his. And he suggested that as inflation has come down, that top line number of 7 percent has come down as well. Um, so he's not maintained this uber hawkish idea. Hmm. I think right now he's been very, very uh, insistent. And at the beginning of the process, the reason why he was advocating 75 basis point hikes was because he felt as if if the Fed did more at the beginning, it would have to do somewhat less hiking at the end. And hmm. so he talks about the need for the Fed to get out in front of the rate hikes um, uh, and get out in front. And it was behind the curve at the time and to perhaps do less damage to the economy. Um, he's also been pretty upbeat on how the economy is weathering this, and he's suggested that we are not necessarily headed for a recession. So um, I think he's felt pretty good about his policy stance, and I, I don't think it's been wrong. All right, Steve, thank you. We appreciate you joining us on the news line. Steve Leisman on the news that the St. Louis Fed's James Bullard is stepping down to take a position with Purdue University.